The new medieval dynasty map, the Oxbow, presents new challenges. As such, we need to start quickly if we're going to make good progress and survive through our first year. So after collecting some basic resources and making our first tools, I'm already thinking about where I want to make my town. Now, you do start with this chest full of goods, which is near where you spawn in, and I could use the tools in here. However, making tools will actually help us to level up. On top of that, money is going to be tight early on in this game, so this chest will act as my personal bank account where I can make a withdrawal if I need to. Now, someone did comment and say that the chest was actually empty, and this is true until you speak to Der One, and then after that, your chest will be filled with all of this stuff too. The location for our town is important. We want to be near all the resources we'll need, like water, trees, and animals to hunt. We also want to be in close proximity to Piastovia, because we'll be going to and from that town a lot in the early game. So that's why I think just across this bridge here is a perfect location, because if we turn back there, we can see that Piastovia is just across the water, and obviously that means there is water right here near us, as well as trees, and there will no doubt be a plenty of animals up in the woods there. So the first thing that I need to do is set out a little area where I want to make my first house. And a lot of this stuff will probably move as we progress through the game, but we can't worry too much about that. We just want to go ahead and get something put down for now, and then we can move on from there. So I think just here we'll be fine. I'm going to clear this area of all the stones and sticks that are here, because we're going to use those resources anyway. And then we're going to build our house here. And from there, we can start building onwards and start getting ready to set up our town and be all prepared and ready to go. Now, already I'm getting a warning that I'm overloaded. So I think one of our first purchases is going to be a backpack, but we're going to want to do some looting before that happens. So this area is pretty much cleared now. It's certainly clear enough. So let's go to buildings and down to houses and build this little simple house right here. And let's see where we can get it. Okay, so it looks like just here is going to work. Let's go ahead and place it down there. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about this at this stage because I don't think I need to, but in the future, then we can always move things. This is our little plot of land here, right next to the road and near the bridge and stuff. So I think it's a pretty good spot. Let's go ahead and start building this thing. We should have enough resources to get the foundations down. And then I think what I'll do is actually build the entire house before we move on to the next thing. And one of the reasons for that is because once we build the house, then we've got some storage inside. Storage is a bit of a problem early on into the game for sure. Just getting enough stuff is a little bit difficult because you've got a limited carry capacity. And I find that the chests in this game don't have like a ton of storage for what they are. So because of that, I may also look to rush into making up resource storage areas in the town too. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't planned out exactly the order of buildings that we're going to do, but it'll be something like that. So what I'll do now is just go ahead and collect all the resources that we need in order to make the house and then move on from there. So with our house now built, we can go inside and get rid of some of our inventory stuff. As I say, you do fill up pretty quickly early on in the game. So anything heavy like the logs here, we've got a few stones as well. Even the sticks, when you've got 100 of them, are going to add up and the straw and stuff like that. And basically anything that we don't need as well, because what we're going to do now is go and loot some areas that are nearby. Finding these areas to loot is actually pretty easy. You come out of the Piastovia town out of this direction right here, next to this bridge that we just come across. And we're going to head off in this direction down here. Should actually probably just have some water and a bit of food before I set off. Looks like we're starting to run low on that. So let's go ahead and have a little drink. And let's see, an apple and a dried meat. Yeah, that looks like a, a pretty good medieval lunch right there. <laughs> so when we're heading off this direction here, um, basically you can see if we come to this T-junction on the left road, right up in front of us here, just in the distance there, is an abandoned house. In this abandoned house, you're going to get some awesome loot. I'm going to show you right now. In fact, there's actually two abandoned houses, but we can have a look at the whole complex. So coming up into this complex, we have a few things that we need to do. First of all, we can run up the side of this house right here. And just in here, you see, there we go. We have a copper axe there. It has 28% durability still left on it. Then up here, we got some beer bottles. So we'll go ahead and take those as well. And around the other side of the house, there's yet another staircase that we can head up. And there's some more things to collect up here. So there we go. We've got a potion of saturation and one of healing two right there. There's another oat beer there, uh, in fact, another oat beer as well. And we also have this dump loot, which has some oat beer and uh, also some fur. And 89 coins, guys, just for nothing. 89 coins right in there. That is awesome. Heading over to this right here is like an abandoned sort of mine site. We've got these little gardens and things right here. But if we head up, and let's just go uh, see inside right here, you've got this chest. So again, 44 coins for absolutely nothing. 
some clay bowls and a bit of salt. I mean, it all helps. It's all good. But the big one, guys, is around the back and down this pit right here. So if we go down here like this and have a little look around, we go through here. Here we go. And there's a load of loot inside. So in the large bundle right here, you see you've got a golden ring, guys, that's worth 750 coins. So instantly we can go ahead and sell this golden ring and get a ton of money. Now, alternatively, you can use it during flirting and give it to a woman if you wish. Oh, we've got some copper bars there too, instantly. But I don't know why you do that at the start of the game. I think it's really useful instead to just go ahead and sell it and then use that money for something more useful. There's also this large container here, which is a separate bit of loot. And there's some stuff in here, including 241 coins. That is amazing. So with that all looted, I'm going to head back into Piastovia and sell my golden ring and maybe some of the other stuff too. If we open up our inventory, you'll see we've got some things here of value. The bronze pickaxe and shovel are worth 390 each. Now, that's not the price you'll get when you sell them. You get about half of that, but it's still very good for early on in the game. On top of that, we've got the copper bars here, which are worth 27. Obviously, the gold ring is the big one. And some of these meads and beers also sell for a little bit too. In the town now, we can just go up to any one of these like? traders and say, show me your wares, and then go ahead and sell whatever we want, which for us at the moment is the golden ring. And there we go. We're now on, let's see, almost 800 coins, Can I believe. I? Yeah, 799 coins already, and we've done basically nothing. This is still day one, and all we did was loot that place. So this is the lady I want to speak to. And the first thing I'm going to do is buy myself a backpack. So let's see if we come down here, we can get ourselves the simple large backpack. And that will add 20 kilos onto our carry weight for 470 coins. Let's buy one of those. Sorry, 480 oh coins, but still pretty good. So let's go ahead and equip our backpack. And there we go. We can now carry 55 kilos. We're on day one and we still have, let's have a look, 319 coins left. Now I'm going to head back to my personal bank account and go ahead and make a little deposit in here. So let's see, I want to put in the bronze stuff that we just collected. Let's put all of that in there. There we go. And maybe I'll put in these copper bars for now too, and the copper axe as well. Basically, anything we're not using right now that we may want to sell later on, we're going to put all of that stuff in here for now. Okay, it looks like our bank account is full, but still, there's a lot of value in this chest right here if we need it. And of course, the other things I still have on me, and I'll go deposit them back in my house. Now, it's coming to the end of the day. As you can see here, it's getting a little bit darker. The sun is setting, and I don't like to film too much during the nighttime because I don't think it's as good for you guys to, to watch. But what I will do is just go ahead and collect some resources or do something like that so I'm productive during the night. Basically, I don't think uh, I want to sleep, and not least through uh, night one. The fact that we can stay awake and use all that time still within the same season to me would be a waste not to. So I'll do that and I'll catch you guys up in the morning. So I've worked through the night and here we are now first thing in the morning and I managed to get myself a good load of logs. So we've got 24 there, another 14 there. I think I've got one on me as well. I've also planned out the town a little bit. So we're going to have like a street going down the middle here, I think. So the road will go like this way, like this. And it'll be a one street town probably for quite a long time. To be honest, it takes a while to expand. But this here will be a house. We can have the well there in between two houses. Seems like a good place for that. And then I've planned out here. This will be the resource storage area. It should be reasonably central to the town uh, as it expands down that way. Now, I would like to uh, make some fields. So we come out the back here and make some fields. Uh, if you're new to the game, by the way, don't uh, like just leave the stumps. You can make up a shovel really easily. It only takes you two logs to make them up. And you see here, every time you go up to a stump, all you have to do is left click it once. But it'll get rid of that stump and give you one log just for that. So it's actually like a good way to get a lot of logs. Plus, it clears the area, which is just nicer for building and stuff like that. Oh, St. John's Wart as well. We'll take some of that. Uh, it's always useful. I'm pretty sure. Just have a quick look at that. Uh, St. John's Wart right there. Yeah, it's for poisoning, so pretty useful throughout the game, that one as well. Uh, let's see, more stumps here. I left a load of stumps so that I could make this point in case anyone who's watching here is new to the game and didn't realize you could do this so easily or whatever else. Now, what I do want to do is uh, sort of lay out a farm area to see buildings, uh, farming, and fields. Now, I don't know how this is going to work out. Like, if I... So you can't rotate fields. You can rotate everything else in the game, but not fields. So it looks like it's going slightly that way. Now, this is the other house here. So I think what I'll do is let's build it from about here. So let's go building, farming, and fields. If we build from like the edge of this house like this, and we come off this way, yeah, this will work pretty well. So how wide would we actually let us go? Um, pretty wide, and then we can come back this way as well. Um, oh, obstacles blocking, that's probably that. Okay, let me clear an area, and then we'll figure out the farm. Okay, I've made a pretty huge farm here, and I have to say it's on a bit of a hilly area, which I think some people prefer to have them flat. To me, it looks kind of natural having it on the hill, but also it saves us having to flatten that land to build other things on it as well. I think it's going to be nice as well. Eventually, we're going to have the two houses here with the well and then a big farm out the back. So what we're going to need to do now is make up a load of hose. Let's see, how many could we make here? Six. 
I'm actually going to make all six of these right now. I think we're going to need at least those, and then we'll get into doing some farming. The way to farm is to find your corner of your field like this and just come in and then use your hoe to do that, and it will just grab it up. That's the first step. One thing it's good to do, though, is count the dimensions of your farm so that you know how many seeds and fertilizer you're going to need. So that was one. And then this will be two. I'm going to go on like this till the corner. So there's three. Okay, so I've counted it and this nine this way by however many that way. But whilst I was here, I saw this little dude. We have a rabbit here who has died. Let's make up a stone knife and they'll be able to skin this guy. And it actually reminded me that I'd also like to make a rabbit trap because as soon as you make that, you can then use that each day. So with our knife, we can now go ahead and skin the rabbit and we should get some fur and some meat from him, which will be useful to us for sure. And now if we go into furniture and decorations and traps, then we can make ourselves up a rabbit trap. Oh, we need some sticks. Well, I've got like 100 sticks, but they're all in my storage. Let me grab those out real quick. Yeah, 249 sticks. Now you might think, why don't I make a few traps up? But unfortunately, you're only allowed to make one when you first get started. So that's fine. Uh, let's go back again to furniture and traps and we'll place the rabbit trap. I think just down out here for now is, is good. Then we'll know exactly where it is and we'll remember to check it and all that sort of stuff. So there we go. We should get some rabbit from that. Uh, so the farm, back to that. So it was nine long and now we're going to count how wide it is as well. Okay, so it's 12 this way and it was nine the other way. So we know that the whole area will need nine by 12, which is, what is that? 90, 108 of the fertilizer and also 108 of any seeds that we need too. So that's pretty good going for our first farm, I think. I'm going to go ahead now and hoe the rest of this land and then we get something in the ground so it can start growing. So here we are with our nice plowed field. And once I've been doing this, I've actually managed to get myself quite a few survival points to be spending as well. So let's start over here. We've got uh, an extraction one that we can spend right here. And I think the best one to get started is the 5% extra experience gain from extraction activities, which is this one here. So let's go ahead and add that one on there. And then over here, we've got one to spend on farming too. Now for this one, I'm going to go for the skilled farmer. We get 25% chance to get additional crops. So for every time we harvest four crops, we'll get five. That's me is actually, that's pretty good. I think we should do that. The other thing about that one as well is next time we do it, it goes up to 50%, which is huge. So that could really improve our crop yield and that could really help us early game. Now we've got a survival point to spend and I'm just going to spend that on the survival knowledge because again that would just give us more experience as we go through the game. Now as for the production skill I'm going to save that for now because it depends what direction we go in the game as to what we actually want to spend that on. So with the farm hoed the next thing it needs is a bit of fertilizer and so I think we're going to need to head back into town. Uh, we need to get ourselves a simple bag and in that simple bag is where you can put your seeds and fertilizer of course. Now I believe we did start with a simple bag. I think it's in the chest that we had at the very start of the game so I'm going to go and have a little look in there and see if I'm right. Okay so let's check out this chest right here and let's see simple bag there we go we've got one of those. To be honest though one probably isn't enough so I'm going to buy a couple more at the market here whilst we buy the fertilizer too. So by speaking to this guy what we can do is buy leather and then just craft the simple bag up ourselves. It's just a hand craftable thing. So let's see I want to buy uh, maybe three of them so we got four in total I'll give that a try at first Goodbye. and once we've done that we can look at getting the other stuff going so let's see simple bag there we go and I forgot to click to make more but let's make all those up now we can buy fertilizer from the same guy and we technically need 108 but let's see whether or not we're even going to be able to get close to buying that many so we can buy 62 but that doesn't take into account obviously that we need to plant something as well that's 4.5 per each one we buy let's have a look at different seeds and see how much they are now it's important that we note what season we're in so we've gone to our map right here you see we're in spring so we want something that you can plant during the spring so you can plant the wheat during the spring and I kind of like the idea of making up a wheat farm and then we can do some cooking with that in the kitchen so I think that's the route I'm going to look to go down uh, for our farm. You can see here though the wheat is 7.5 per time. Now the other thing to remember is with this wheat we'll be able to turn it into stuff to either eat or then to sell. As such I'm going to go to my bank account make a little deposit right here and sell some things and then we can use those things so that we can buy more and make a bigger farm. I think that's probably a good way to go in the early game just to get a big load of production going on with the same thing and then we can be a bit more efficient if we do it that way. And while we're here we just will skin this rooster as well. I see this guy here quite a lot so I think this is somewhere else we can come back to and get food as we go through. So I'm going to look to sell the bronze pickaxe and also the bronze shovel. On top of that I'm going to sell the copper shovel as well. I think that'll be it for now. I'll go and sell all these things and see how far that gets us. Okay so we now have 763 coins which is pretty good so let's see now what we're able to buy with this. So in terms of fertilizer I think what I'll do is I'll buy let's see let's go for well let's do 56 then it's exactly half the farm see if we can do that many. So now for the wheat grain let's go ahead and buy some of that. Can we buy 56? We can. We can buy a bit more than that so let's see 55, 56. There we go. So that still leaves us with 91 coins plus we still have our bank account of course so I'm going to go ahead and plant the farm now it's going to be a very big start of farm probably the biggest I've ever done on the first day 
but hopefully that will stand us in good stead throughout the rest of this playthrough. Now, in terms of farming, we need to select our simple bag and then we can right click that and at first we can fertilize it. So we just look down and throw some fertilizer down onto the ground there. At that point, we need to go ahead and get our hoe. Let's see that one right there and hoe this fertilized ground. So then it changes texture, looks like that. We get our simple bag once again and we'll go this time onto the uh, wheat grain, which is right there. And we'll throw some of that down onto the floor. So that's the process. We need to do that for this entire farm. Now, obviously the way you would do it is obviously to select the first fertilizer and then fertilize the whole thing and then hoe the whole thing and plant the whole thing. One thing that did occur to me is during my looting I actually found some more seeds so at the end of planting all of this wheat I'll go and see what else we managed to find and I'll get that in the ground too. The seeds being in our chest are really of no use to us but as soon as we get things planted then we'll be able to get them growing of course and then harvesting them and at that stage, we're going to have ourselves the ability to sell them or use them for food. This is going to take quite a while, and I don't think it's going to be very interesting to watch, even as a time lapse. So I'm just going to bring you guys back in when everything's all planted and the farm is done. Slight change of plan. I realized that I can make the farm whilst the night time's happening, because that's not time that I would film anyway. And we can actually get started on this right here, the resource storage area, because it's something that I actually really desperately am starting to need. So I will do this as a time lapse, but let me know down in the comments whether for future episodes you'd prefer me to just skip out the time lapse bit and go straight on to the bit where it's done and then show you guys around then. Or if you actually quite like the time lapse being in there just to see the process of it being built. Look at this. I just stumbled upon a chest right out here in the open. That's awesome. What is in this chest? We've got some loot. Uh, 67 coins, which is always good. And also a mead, which we could sell or use. So that was uh, pretty handy just lying there out in the open. That's awesome. And we also got a wooden shovel there. Okay, so here we go. The resource storage has now been built. A nice big building right here. Let's take a little look inside. I'm guessing there's going to be some, some chests in here. There's one chest right there. Let's have a look. So this chest right here can hold, though, 1,000 kilograms. So if we go back into uh, our house over here, then I believe it's 50 kilograms for the chest that's in here. Let's have a little double check. Yeah, there we go. 50 kilograms. Just says down here at the bottom of the chest. So obviously that is, uh, you know, basically the equivalent of 20 chests that we can have there. So although it looks small, it's actually quite a lot. It's going to be really helpful for us. It also means I can start getting a bit more organized and I can start putting things over in that chest instead. So I think sticks, they'd be good to have over there. We'll take those out of here and any future, you know, logs or straw or stone, anything like that, that we're going to be building out of can go here for now and then we'll know where it is. Now I was playing in the uh, different perspective right there whilst I was uh, doing that build. I thought it might look better for the time lapse again let me know what you think down in the comments i think for the most part of this game i'll be playing in the uh, first person perspective rather than third person i just think it looks a little bit better on screen when it's like this rather than like this but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments another morning in the game and we've got something in our rabbit trap well probably a rabbit actually funnily enough <laughs> so there we go we can collect that and we can also arm that ready to go again now in the night, I've done a couple of things. We've got the workshop built here, so we can make up, you know, things like buckets and baskets and stuff like that there. The buckets are of particular interest because they can be used over in the well in a moment, and then we can get some water that way out of the well. We've also got this right here. This is the wood station, so we can basically turn our logs into the planks. This is the level one wood hut, and the planks are needed to make the bucket. So it's all sort of tying in, and we're loosely getting a bit of a street forming just going down here, as you can see. I think that I'm going to have to start heading these buildings off around that way a little bit. It'd be a bit of a curved road, but, you know, that should be some sort of medieval feel to it, I think. Uh, the farm has been planted for everything that we've got. I don't know if it was quite half the farm. I think my maths might have been a bit wrong on that one. But, uh, yeah, we where are we here? We have got some stuff planted in the ground. You can just about see it there. It's like obviously just seeds right now. But that will grow in the future. Uh, now, the next building I was looking at is making is the uh, barn right here. And there's a reason for that. If we go into the buildings and farming down here, we've got the barn. And you can see there's a few different things you can do here. Um, but one of the things that we can do is we've got a load of berries on us. So when I was out collecting stuff, I found some berries. Uh, are they, they on me or have I put them somewhere? Let me find them. Okay, I was looking under B, but they're under U because they're unripe berries. There we go, 55 of those. So if you throw those on the barn floor, once it has been built, they will eventually rot. And that will happen wherever you throw them. Uh, you don't have to throw them on the barn floor. But you can use that rot in the barn floor to convert it into fertilizer, I believe. Now, I'm, I'm pretty certain that's right. We're going to find out as we go through. The next step is for me to go ahead and build the barn.
Okay, there we go. The barn building is now complete. So we can go inside here and leave our berries down on the floor. I'm guessing the best place for them is down here. Like I said, I've not actually done this before, but we're going to give it a go. So we need to go down unripe berries. I found a few more on my travels. We've got 157 now just going on the floor. The reason we do that is to leave them out so that they will rot. Then I believe we can use the rot over in here and turn that into fertilizer. Okay, I left these in the wrong spot. I just had a look. So basically, let's get these berries again. They need to go over here. And on this workbench right here, you see the fertilizer there can be made from rot. And so if we just leave them down here, this is the best place for them. So that's what we're going to do with any berries that we find uh, that we want to turn into rot. So there they go, 157 down on the floor. Perfect little spot for them. We do have a chest in here that can hold 250 kilos as well. So we can keep a load of farming goods in there, which is good. Then over here, we've got the kern. And looking at this, we can make the uh, different flour from different recipes. But we get 12 flour out of, let's see, six wheat grains. So once we've grown our wheat uh, over in the field just here, then we can bring it in here and turn it into the uh, flour, which is very, very useful. And we also have this threshing floor here. Now from here, you can use the uh, let's see, wheat grain and straw. And we get wheat. Is that right? We get wheat from that? Yeah, it seems to be the case. So a type of grain crafted from wheat on the threshing floor in the barn. We use for cooking in the kitchen or brewing in the tavern and that sort of stuff. So that's really awesome. We can use that to get our wheat. And you can also make oat grain, rye grain, and flax seeds can be used too over here. So that's pretty cool. We've got a load of different options in this barn. A very productive building indeed that either ourselves or if we get some workers employed in there can uh, manage. So that's pretty good. Now, I really would like to make the most of this farm. And so that's going to require that we go and buy a load of extra fertilizer and obviously some extra seeds. Although, like I said, I do have some seeds. So if we want to, then we can plant those. I think I've got some carrot and some beetroot seeds or something like that. So yeah, we got six of the carrot seeds right here. We found those on our travels. But I think that's the only seeds we've got because the hot plants, these are seedlings, but they have to be grown in orchards. You can't grow those in fields. As for the carrots, uh, they have to be planted during spring or winter. And right now it is summer, is it? Uh, let me double check. No, it is spring. Okay, so we're still good on that. In that case, I'm going to head back to the bank account, see what else I can sell to get some more fertilizer in and get some more things planted in the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and sell a few things here. We'll go for the copper knife. We got a couple of those. We got the copper hoe there, as well as two of the copper hammers. I'll also sell the copper bars at this stage. It's all stuff that we can get more of later. And you know what? Let's let's keep hold of the stone spears found and see if this is going to be enough. So we're on 158 coins right now. Let's go ahead and sell all this stuff and see what we end up on. Okay, so we're on 423.5. So let's go ahead now and see what fertilizer and seeds we can get for that. So I'm going to go for another 35 of the fertilizer and let's go down to the wheat grain down at the bottom here. Where is that? Let's see how much of that we can buy as well. Wow, that actually worked out perfectly. That wasn't me uh, working that out before, but there we go. We managed to get 35 of each, so that's perfect. We did want a little bit more fertilizer so that we could plant those carrots, but honestly, it's not the biggest deal in the world. The main thing is that we're expanding out our farm and making the most of that yield through the winter. So back at the farm, it's the same process once again, starting with fertilizing. So let's see what we got up to here. So we'll do that and then hoe all the soil and get stuff in the ground. But once again, I'll spare you guys having to watch this and I'll catch up with you when it's done. Well, this may look like a new morning, but actually guys, this is a new season. We have now entered a brand new season. If I go to my map, you see here, we're now in summer. And I've managed to get a couple of other things done as well. We've got the next house built right here. So we've got a couple of houses here, obviously my house there and this one over here. And I managed to spend a few extra survival points too. On top of that, our farm is growing nicely. So I started up. We got most of the farm done. It's just this little bit at the back here that we didn't quite have enough resources and money and stuff like that to make up. Now, the next thing that I want to do, or the, probably the final thing for today, is to make up the hunting lodge, uh, the first level of the hunting lodge. Uh, so the question now is where we're going to put it. And I'm thinking somewhere up here could be good. Let's see if we can find a good spot. So in the top left, you can see there we've discovered an animal spot for deer. So this seems like a perfect spot for me. It's a nice location too. We've got uh, the river just down there, as you can see. There were some deer off in the distance. Uh, there we go, just up there. If I zoom in with my camera, you'll see those. I'll, I'll do that during the, the edit, of course. So this is probably a good spot for the hunting lodge. Just a little bit away from the town, but hopefully that'll be okay. So let's see if we can find somewhere flat enough around here. Not handcrafting and building, hunting, hunting lodge one. Somewhere just on top of this hill. Let's see if I can position this. Okay, yeah, it looks like we can place it just here. There we go. So let's get on to building that. And I guess we're gonna need stones first of all. And once again, we'll time lapse this build.
so here it is in all its glory, the hunting lodge. <laughs> we have a level one hunting lodge now. Uh, heading inside, there's not a lot to see. We do have a little chest here with 100 kilograms capacity, not too bad. And uh, we've also got a workbench over here. We can make all kinds of hunting gear. Obviously, once we unlock that, we're not quite at that stage just yet. The good thing about having this, though, is we can get our first new village people when we get them in to be working at the hunting lodge. And then that should mean that we're good for food from then on out, hopefully, as long as we prioritize the food as, like, you know, the main thing we do when we get people coming into the town every time we expand, then we should be okay. On top of that, just coming in here, I did check on this, and we do have rot. We've got 157 rot, which we can now just pick up and use here to convert that into, let's see... Oh yeah, this one right here in front of me, <laughs> the fertilizer right there. So 10 rot will give you one fertilizer, which is why it's worth collecting every berry you can because you don't get a great return from it. But it is still a bit of a help. Seems like a good place to end the first episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do subscribe.